Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how we use ClickHouse at Rail to power fast exploratory BI. I am uh, doing my best to use some of the products uh, from the companies that uh, preceded me. This is a, a straight out of ChatGPT this morning. I asked it to make a, a data center with uh, some, some ClickHouse, uh, a ClickHouse palette. So uh, it turns out that some of this vector stuff is, uh, is working pretty well. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about RHEL and what operational BI is, how it differs from traditional BI. I'll, I'll mention a little bit why we chose ClickHouse. And then we're going to be brave enough to uh, do a live product demo. So we'll see how that works. I do think the internet here at Cloudflare is pretty solid. So uh, we'll probably be able to keep that going. So what is RHEL? RHEL is an operational BI platform. We spun the core IP out of a company called Snapchat. We, um, we don't come to choosing OLAP databases easy because the company that we sold to Snapchat was a, Snapchat was a business called Metamarkets, which created Apache Druid almost uh, 10 years ago. So we, uh, we know a thing or two about building databases, and I hope uh, no one took offense at Anker's uh, criticisms of what, what's missing in ClickHouse. It takes a long time to build uh, robust databases. Today, we, we operate at, at significant scale. We've got about 100 billion events daily. Uh, we serve thousands of customers with our BI um, platform, and, and we mostly work with ad tech and e-commerce platforms, although we do work with a few AI and fintech businesses as well. So w what is operational BI? Why do we think it's different? Well, traditional BI, the, the kind that most of us, I think, have gotten used to working with is unfortunately slow and rigid. It's, it's kind of amazing that as consumers, we're used to speed everywhere. But as we saw Anker's uh, demo, people are just amazed when their data applications are fast. Uh, it shouldn't be that way. Data applications should be fast all the time. But we've gotten used to this sort of slow, um, can dashboard reports, spinners. If you ask most people how they feel about their BI tools today, um, they probably feel the way they felt about their phones in, you know, before the iPhone came along. So we, we think of operational BI as something that's fast and flexible, allows ad hoc exploratory analysis. Uh, every click should be instant. And it requires a high performance database to deliver that experience. I think we saw today announced that uh, Tabular just got acquired for a few billion dollars by Databricks. It's, you know, we might be in a, a, approaching a place where we're seeing a bifurcation of basically two classes of, um, of data platforms, fast and slow. And I think um, ClickHouse certainly has a chance at being the fast layer. And maybe SQL on S3 is enough for everyone else. And we don't know where that leaves Redshift and BigQuery and Snowflake and some of the other cloud data warehouses. So why did we choose ClickHouse? I think um, a, a few reasons, but, but probably you, know, you can read what's on this slide. I would say that it, it for us represented the right balance of having uh, scalability. I think the challenge is anyone who's worked with um, uh, some of the other in-memory databases out there is they might be ergonomic and they might be fast, but scale is really difficult to achieve. So ClickHouse is probably the most scalable um, of, of the in-memory databases that we've worked with, has the best uh, ergonomics in terms of SQL, uh, and yet it's simple and it's open source. There's a vibrant community, I think, represented by all the folks here, um, which makes it easy for us to adopt uh, before we decide to sign a, a big contract with Mike and ClickHouse Cloud, we can use the open source version. I think broadly, to overgeneralize, there's two classes of analytics that I, I, th I do think are on a, a, a collision course of sorts. Historically, in a very mature category is business intelligence. We see you know, Snowflake, Redshift, BigQuery, Databricks. Um, these folks have been building backends for our, your traditional BI tools for decades. But recently, and if you look at where ClickHouse has been adopted, I think widely, uh, there's another class of tools which are really positioning themselves as observability tools. Traditionally, these are tools that are observing IT systems. But I think as we put microchips uh, in everything, we are starting uh, to evolve to a place where we're not just observing servers. We're observing um, fleets of cars. We're observing uh, payment transactions. Um, really, almost everything we do in the world, there's a mirror digital universe of signal that's getting tracked. And we need to observe that signal, collect it. So 
I think of operational intelligence as actually sitting between these two um, classes. BI typically looks at historical data, usually days of um, days old data. Observable, uh, observability systems are often looking at real time data, and we saw, I think, Brain Trust uh, is a great example of that. But there's also, I think, a place for near time data. And in fact, most companies that have humans in the loop looking at data are looking at data that might be minutes to hours old, intraday decision making by operators. And ClickHouse is really the only engine today that actually spans both BI use cases on the one side as well as observability use cases on the other. So I think it's a very versatile engine. Um, and RIL is looking to build uh, a BI tool that also focuses on this middle. I think there's some white space there between what traditional BI systems do and what observability systems do today. So what makes our tool different? Well, first of all, we're faster. Believe it or not, people, I think, again, have gotten so used to slow dashboards, they don't know what they're missing until they see it. We also embrace BI as code. We really do target a persona of data engineers, folks who are comfortable with code, uh, analytics engineers that can deploy in a local environment and then deploy, um, develop locally and then deploy globally. And we also embrace a metrics first philosophy. Metrics really are the, the core primitive in data. Tables are, are one step too uh, low and really people shouldn't be designing dashboards in our view, they should be designing metrics and then exploring those metrics. RIL is, in essence, a metrics explorer. We're a metrics browser um, for, for data workers. OK, so I'll get into a live demo uh, with the caveat that a couple of three weeks ago, I guess by this timestamp, I wrote on LinkedIn that um, demos using publicly available data sets are uh, useless, and no one uses these demos. And uh, a certain individual from ClickHouse wrote back, said, I use my demos every day. Uh, so in <laughs> deference to Alexa, who's not here, I am going to be using a demo data set. Um, I think Alexa got more likes to his comment than I got on my original post. So I'm going to be a hypocrite and show off a, uh, a, a demo data set here. Um, but I am going to use one of the data sets that he mentioned in his comment. So maybe it turns out it was good that he responded there. So RHEL, it's very easy if you want to try this demo at home yourself. We have a very short command. RHEL is a, a binary with, with no dependencies that you can download and install uh, on your command line. This is RHEL. Um, this is the dashboard tool. I'm actually running it um, right now in localhost. And just to give a feel for how we actually got here, um, the way that you would actually use RHEL is you would uh, run this curl command um, that would bring down, whoops, uh, bring down this uh, binary. And then you would uh, fire it up and you can specify the port. Here we're running on, on just 9,000. Um, and this is actually looking at a, a New York taxi metrics a data set. It's about 3 million rows. And just to kind of, um, uh, kind of show off what's, what's possible with, with RHEL, this is a curated um, data set. But if we were to go to the, I think this, shot, this is correct, right? OK, good. I've, I've hooked up to the. Um, to the ClickHouse playground, play.clickhouse.com. Um, RHEL recently built a, a connector for ClickHouse that's directly querying this data. And we can actually go in um, and basically build a dashboard from um, any one of these tables with a single click. So continue to use uh, some of the tools uh, of the folks that were presenting earlier. We're using OpenAI to actually look at that table and infer what would be a good set of metrics for the data set uh, in that table. Uh, we're going to build basically a metrics uh, schema. And then from that, uh, again, assuming um, my internet is functioning, uh, we will get a dashboard um, back. So I'm going to just move over and, and uh, um, show how we would actually have done that. If you fire up RHEL, you would go to um, add data. If you're running a ClickHouse cluster yourself locally, if you're running a ClickHouse uh, cluster in ClickHouse Cloud, um, or if you're running it uh, on your own machine as I am, you can actually click here and uh, connect to that ClickHouse uh, table and generate um, a dashboard. So just to give kind of a brief you know, walkthrough of what RHEL allows uh, you to do, under the covers here, there is a, um, this is a, a local ClickHouse cluster that I'm running. I've connected to it. I've actually already inserted about 3 million um, 3 million taxi rides 
and done a little bit of data modeling here. And um, RIL really focuses on um, defining these uh, dashboards as uh, YAML. And there's a set of dimensions that are described here in measures. And uh, if OpenAI had helped us, we would have generated this dashboard instantly. Um, when these are published, the value of this dashboard is that uh, everything is extremely fast. So um, one of the, uh, if I can get to the actual uh, uh, point and click here, uh, every click that we do in, in RIL is actually querying that ClickHouse database that I'm running locally. And an example would be doing some operational intelligence of why on earth is there suddenly a massive spike here in the average distance traveled uh, for taxi riders in the year 2015 summer. And I can zoom into that um, pretty quickly and basically figure out that uh, there is actually, a, I think, a rider here who had a, 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 a single customer that had a very long trip. So I can actually see here, I believe, um, average distance. Yeah, there's a, there it is, a trip ID. So there's one, uh, this is obviously not someone who did a 1.7 million, um, no one took a 1.7 mile 1.7 million mile uh, taxi ride, but uh, real just shows you how quickly and easily you can go from you know three million records in a tool um, all the way down to a single record and identify you know what might be a root cause. Um, the other thing we've done in real is we focused on um, building out um, pivot table functionality. So if you want to uh, look at this data in the in the pivot table view, um, again that's just a few clicks. Real's mo is that these uh, explorations should be um, these explorations should be just point and click. You shouldn't have to build these graphs. Um, you should be able to just look at seven days of data or 24 hours of data. And each of these things are running, um, again, against that local ClickHouse cluster and returning these, um, returning these queries instantly. Uh, the last thing I'll show is that uh, we've worked, you know, for, for real analytics is not really a, um, a creation task. Again, it's a discovery task. And so we've done a lot of work to make it possible if you want to go and look at um, data and compare, you know, what's the, um, the volume of cash versus credit uh, transactions for taxi rides here, you can easily navigate to different styles of visualization in RIL. Um, and again, that's, that's sort of instant. So uh, in essence, uh, we've, we've kind of taken the, the power of ClickHouse as a back end, and we've tried to create a much more immersive um, experiential BI tool, and frankly, it's it's an experience that we feel um, really isn't possible with some of the more traditional um, tools out there today. Thank you.